Hello everybody, it's Martin here. Today we're going to build a little machine that I've thought of building for some time. We're going to build a machine that can uh, remove rust from bolts and other iron stuff. Rust and maybe some old paint. Uh, I've seen others make this kind of machine before where they spend it in wires and stuff and make it quite big thing out of it we're going to try to make something that is compact and my plan is like something like this we're going to make a box yes the ordinary box and it's gonna make a hole in it and in that hole we're going to place this baking form And we will spend it with bolts that is on um, springs so it can vibrate but still be in a compact box. We we'll place a motor hopefully inside here so we can make it real compact. The second choice we have is to mount a motor on it in this way. But I hope we can find something in my storage that can fit inside here. So this will be mounted in the wooden box on some springs with a motor inside it that will vibrate. We will have the little bit control on the other side with the on off maybe something to re regulate the speed of the motor and uh, all the electronics and all the suppo power supply will fit inside the box. In here we will put some gravel maybe something on it so it doesn't escape. And then we put the bolts and all the stuff that we want to have the rust removed on. And we just stand there and vibrate. Hopefully this will work. But let's get started. Okay, first of all, let's find some kind of motor that will be suitable for this. The backup plan is to use like an um, ordinary stand for a computer or something, or quite large ones, but they will build some in the bottom of the box, but it's better than nothing. Let's see if we can find it. We have motors. We have some bigger motors. These are the small ones. Okay, let's see what we can find. This is a step motor, we have no use for that. You do that one. This is quite a good motor. Let's see if we can make this run on ordinary DC. And sadly, there is no information on what kind of voltage it needs. Well, you see, this one is too small. I think it's have to be this one, or maybe one of those. Uh, Fans. Let's see if we look at those tools as well. Well, this will be a good um, backup plan. It's a big fan. We can remove some of the blades and place some weights on it. It's actually quite the easiest way to do it. And runs at 12 volts, which is really nice. We just have to see what this can give for kind of output and what we can do to mount some weight on it to make it vibrate. And for the power switch, I do have some different choices. I mean, they only have to handle 12 volts. But I think I would go with this one. It's a small, but still cute switch and for, to variate the power i would see if i can make this one work but it's quite hard to turn but that can be a good thing when everything's vibrating that it's not too easy to turn it so i just have to figure out how this works i think you know how and now for the power supply okay i found this one nine volts one two 
and I found this little thing that I should have a contact and everything on it and it puts out I think it was 12 volt on this side but almost 12 volts on that side and on this side that didn't go very well did it as well so that would be perfect and let's see if it can run this right let's see if we can make it still that works perfect and the fan hopefully That works good as well. So that's perfect. We now have two options. I think this would be all the electronics. We have the motor, we have the power supply, we have the on off switch, and we have the power regulator if we're going to need do it or not. We just have to see about that. Now the rest of the stuff. I think we're going to go with this fan. Because sure it will be like 30 millimeters bigger than it have to be, but I think this would be quite easy to modify. Yes, hot glues and stuff on two of the fans. And I do have bolts that are a perfect fit for it to mount it on the bottom of the cake form. So we'll go with this one. So let's see how it easiest to remove this hmm quite hard <laughs> I think you have the machine for the for the job Okay we're going to use this vibrating multipurpose saw to cut the fins I think we can get in that to do that. All my blades are quite weird, weird, because I borrowed this to a friend, and that was obviously a bad idea because now I don't have any blades. But let's see what we can do with it. Okay, let's see how it runs now. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it's doing very well. Uh, okay, I need power. Contacts are away from each other. Good. Let's add 240 volts. And let's see how it behaves. I think that would be perfect. Maybe it doesn't even have to add extra weight, but... Okay, before we start to cut every piece and then make the round hole in the top, we're going to do it things like this. I'm going to take this whatever it's called in English and I'm going to bend it down so we have some more place to make a hole and to mount the screws it's quite easy it's a perfect shape because we know but if we just follow this one we will have it on that side let's just take a pair of tongues Start working it. Let's 
something like this. It's not perfect, but it will do. We make all these four of this so they can vibrate. You can probably use any kind of board, play wood, MDF. I'm going to use this one, and I think this would be enough for this project. Maybe, yeah, I don't think it will. I would actually take it down to my real, my bigger workshop and cut, cut it on the big saw. Yes, so we got the perfect angles. So, let's go down there. So, now the old pieces are cut. And now we'll start with the, probably the hardest part of this building, that is to make a 23 centimeter big hole in this one. We use the jigsaw to cut it out, but first we have to measure it out. So now I know one more tool I need to get to my little workshop that I obviously lost. I need a new one of these because this is kind of in, let's just say it, improvised. I think it would be good enough to make our hole. See, 23 that have to be like 11 and a half, right? Yes. Let's see what we have here. I do not kidding with you, it's 11 and a half and I haven't changed it. That's perfect. <coughs> then, let's just measure out the middle of the plate. Let me do this the easiest way by just making a mark like this and like This and we have the middle. Now let's see if we can make this work at this one because, as I said, it's kind of improvised. Well, seemed to work. And the good thing with this mark in the middle is that we have some way know where to measure it from okay almost 23 good now we just have to cut it out okay the first thing we need to do when to, to sew this hole is of course to drill a hole in it so we can get sawed on So, let's cut a hole. Well, it's not the easiest thing to cut a hole, perfect hole, with the jigsaw. But I'm kind of pleased. We can always go over it with a, some sandpaper if it doesn't fit. My best tips, tip for you if you're going to cut anything with the jigsaw, make sure that it's really, really secured to the something. Otherwise, it was only only just jump around now let's see this is the first time we try it it's perfect it's bloody perfect let's continue okay what we're going to do now is try to mount the fan on this one I think we Quite do something like that. Perfect. 
Let's start with that one. Okay, the bolts you are going to use are four and it's M4, so it's four millimeters. We're going to drill the hole like four and a half, just to be on the safe side. Okay, we just start to one hole and then we mark out the rest of them when we put this one in place. Being such a cheap thing is quite thick material. <laughs> okay, all four screws are done and are tightly fit. Won't go anywhere. And now I need to place it on this one. I think I will place it so the springs faces the corners. And how are we going to do this? I think we're going to drill the hole here first. And then I just do it. Yes. That's the way how we do it. I just need to find some new screws. Okay, I just had to take a little bit larger screws on this one. Because we don't have four. That's the same in anything else than M6. But I think this would be great. Be some movement. And there is room. We just have to try it. I would drill four holes, one in each of these ones. And I would do it like six and a half millimeters. So, come back to you when I'm done. Well, I did screw up one of the holes. But let's just hope it's good enough in a way. So we take a spring like this. We start with one nut, but maybe we need two because we don't have any working. And let's not start with the one that was wrong. So let's start with this one. And maybe we should do it in the right order. Screw. Oops. Spring, then the wood, and then something on the other side. Something like that, perhaps. I just realized another thing. Let me screw everything up. I hope the spring can hold the load of the sand. Gravel. I haven't talked about that one. Okay, I'm quite sure it will work, but I think it would be noisy as hell. I mean, it's noisy as me moving it around, and imagine all this shaking around. Hmm. As you can see, we have springs all over the place. And I will add one knot on every one and I will tighten them. That will just have to work as a lock. So everything is tight. I don't think they will come off in the first time. I hope not. This will be noisy. I was thinking of adding some uh, rubber on it, but the worst noise is when the plate is uh, rubbing against the um, jingle. Well, let's build the box. Okay, the box is almost done. I won't film every little step. I mean, you know how to put the box together. If you don't, you will figure it out. And um, what I can tell you is, use glue when you work with wood. The screws are more or less just there to hold it, it to the glue have hardened. And always try to get the screws a little bit under the material. Well, 
three sides are done and the bottom the thing we're going to do now is we're going to mount the electronics I want to have this one around there I want to have this one like this then I want to have one of the cables go to the switch that will sit here and we have to make a hole for this one that would fit around there and that's more or less everything I guess fitting this one would be the hardest part but I think we can solve it so let's begin now I will make the holes for this one so we can um, actually think I'm only going to have to cut off the piece of the corner sadly I, <coughs> I can't use the um, raker that I wanted to use because it didn't go through it was too small so I'm going to use this one I don't know what kind of voltage it should take but it doesn't really matter it's just 12 volts oh it's take 200, 200 volts hmm. and we do the same as the one down there we just cut the corners so here we have it one for the power supply and one for the power switch I really love this part of a project when you start to feel that you're going to soon be ready and try it and see if it works um, very curious about that part so. okay that one goes there and that one comes there perfect just place it like this and start connecting everything okay only thing that's left to do now is to connect the fan I actually made it like this just because it's easier to change anything if we get the polarity wrong or something like that nice and I will do the same thing on the fan just because I... Okay. Let's start it up and see what happens. Turn on power. And we need. Now we don't know if the power is on or off. I guess it's off. Seems to work. <clears throat> okay, except for the paint job, we are done. There's power in going. We have a switch. Everything is very nice looking at that way. And it's vibrating. Now I'll get some sand, get it in, and we just have to leave it for some time to see if it works. I really hope it works. It would be great. I was going to use sand, but like always this summer, it's raining outside and the sand is outside, so it's wet, and I don't think it will work when it's wet. So I'm using the kitty litter instead. It's clay, it's rock hard. I hope it works. Uh, this did put some load on the feathers, so I will start it up and we'll see how much it would move. It's doing what it's supposed to do, vibrating and rubbing the sand or clay against 
dark extra put in it but I'm afraid of doing it a little bit too little I will leave it now Let's see what's the time it's uh, five o'clock we'll have some dinner at six o'clock and see like three hours we'll leave it for three hours and hopefully it won't start to burn or something like that I would put a um, fire warner in the ceiling just in case and uh, Okay, I would like to say there is a difference. But it's not good enough. I mean, I want to have the metal clean. I don't want to have him like this one. It's, it's, it seems to be black. I want to have a problem using your cell phone as a camera is that people sometimes call you let's continue down here did put in some bones didn't it? Oh. I have to say it there seems to be quite a difference this one isn't that good, but still. But I think we're going to try to change something. I think you know the last hours. I think this media is too soft. Maybe it will um, remove some of the rust. But I'm thinking of the paint and all that. So I would actually do this. I would put this back in the bag. And then I will go out and get me some sand and I will have to dry it because it's still raining outside. I will put in the sand instead. I mean the sand is stone, this is clay. It's really hard but it's still soft compared to the stone. So that's how we do that and then we will leave this machine hopefully the whole night and hopefully all the bolts will be ready by tomorrow. Okay, we have the sand in, it's still a little bit moist, so it's a little bit heavier than it should be. But let's start. seems to work we'll leave it overnight and it's really loud so I hope we don't disturb the whole family because then we have to shut it off the big question I guess here is how long will the computer fan last I think we'll have to look for a new engine already maybe one that we can fit in here as was planned from the beginning but for the moment let's just continue and if it breaks, it breaks and we have to do something else. And we see tomorrow if it's worth put some paint on this machine. Hopefully it is. And we'll put it to work. But let's just finish the test and see it in the morning. So we'll give it roughly 12 hours of operation. Well, 
it's a white knight. And they seem to be pretty. Put this piece in. This was a rusty rebar. Come almost completely rust free. So the machine seemed to work. It do remove rust. However, paint is still there. But if you compare them to what we have from the beginning, okay. So if we prepare the bolts against what we had in the beginning, I would say they are much better. There's one more. This one isn't that good. That one is almost perfect. So is that one. Oh, there it is. This one seems good as well. Let's cut all of them. Yes. So I would say the machine works, and you can always leave them in there for some longer time than 12 hours. We can leave them in for one day. I will give the machine a nice paint job. Well, I'm done with the paint job. Actually, I'm kind of happy with this machine. It's, it works as it's supposed to do. Takes some time, but that was more or less expected. So, I'm pleased with it. Read one if you want to. Thank you for watching, and please give me a thumbs up and do subscribe.